Live from Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Interconnect 2016, brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for exclusive coverage of IBM Interconnect 2016. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. Our next guest is Mo Abdullah, who's the VP of Cloud Architecture and Solutions on the Blue Mix team now on a new role, going out there and doing all the architecture. He's one in the brain trust of Blue Mix. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much, John. Great to be here. Thanks for spending this time to come on. I know we're late in day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, three great days with all the execs on. Now we get to get down and dirty on Blue Mix. Right. Okay, so Blue Mix obviously doing well. Yes. Gave them props on day one. You still got the naysayers out there. Good luck with that against Amazon. So you're always going to have that Amazon comparison, right? So that's out there. But what a progress from Pulse two years ago. A lot of progress. Tons of progress. You guys have been beavering away, running like the wind. Now you're hardening. What's the status? Where have you guys really knocked the ball out of the park? Where have you solidly put the foundation down? And what areas are you hardening? So, um, as you said, John, great progress. Uh, a lot of the hardening that happened was really based on curation of client experiences. Uh, initially, of course, you know, people think of cloud just as a public cloud, but as you heard us talk about and say a lot, cloud is for us is in a hybrid setting. Uh, really nailing that down, the ability for people to start to build applications and then consume them in the way they want, whether it's in a local, dedicated, or public fashion, uh, has been a lot of the effort last year. And of course, a lot of it is based on grounding, you know, common uh, standards and technologies that really lend themselves to sort of that environment. Uh, the second area that I would say we really hardened uh, past the sort of local and so on is defining repeatable solutions. A lot of times clients have been doing first of a kind in the cloud, mm -hmm. and now we started to understand the, you know, the common patterns around mobile or data. Uh, we're uh, aggressively going on saying, we think you really should think about doing it this way. So obviously cloud is, is running the wind, and Watson's been sprinkled in there. Yes. So Watson, as Sandy Carter says, is the catnip. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> that's, that's obviously to give some differentiation. Yes. A little IBM twist to it, obviously, for differentiation. Uh, microservices, uh, we had uh, Marie on earlier, Marie Week. Yes. She was talking about that. How is the glue layer working with, with Bluemix right now? Because obviously the APIs are key. So it's everything is a service. Yes. Is the concept. What's going on in the glue layer and all this? Oh, absolutely, great concept. So one of the things we worked on last year, to your point about hardening, is creating essentially a common operating system for the platform so that all of the services that are coming on board can easily connect. That operating system underneath it really has multiple runtimes. OpenStack being a key element for extracting the infrastructure, that's a key glue element. The second is around containers. As people start to build services, so for example, Watson is built on top of containers, which in turn leverage the same sort of common operating system services. So Watson can plug in via the container. Via the container, So absolutely. OpenStack Summit's coming up in Austin. Um, is OpenStack doing well? I mean, you guys happy oh, with the yes. OpenStack piece? Your thoughts on that? Uh, OpenStack is growing. Uh, I mean, at these days with these open source projects, it's like a race as to who's growing fastest, but they're all like sort of- OpenStack is healthy. Very healthy, very, very healthy. And you're healthy. happy with the progress of OpenStack? Absolutely. Uh, we've clocked in now, probably we've exceeded the 150,000 contribution, something we haven't seen before in terms of people engagement and access. And so talk about the relationship between Cloud Foundry and IBM, obviously you use Cloud Foundry. How does that relate into it? You guys, do you tweak it a little bit? And obviously, and you know, Pivotal is, I think, it's part of Cloud Foundry. Yes. How yes. does this all work together? So actually, uh, this is a very, very important design point for us. You know, many clouds are built based on a single runtime, either something like a Foundry-based, which gives you that rapid application, container-based, which gives you a lot of the sort of microservices, or OpenStack, which gives you a lot of control in terms of how you want to configure applications. The reality is, when you look at what customers are doing, is that they're combining these things together. So Foundry for us, um, both, of course, is a critical element for these mobile apps, rapid development, but it has to find a way to fit in. So when you think about uh, Watson services, mobile services manifesting themselves, mm -hmm. 
how am I going to be able to connect that back to some um, container application? So the work we're doing with them is much more around, not, you know, we've moved from just hardening the base to how do we integrate these ecosystems together. Okay, so standards is a big problem right now. Yep. In the sense of people, customers want standards because yes. if the vendors are in there polluting, no, I shouldn't say polluting, polluting the standards efforts by having different versions, that is not good for the customer, yes. right? You know, whether we had the IETF in the old days, the W3C, yes. IOT in particular, big standards kind of thing that's going on now. So that's a big deal. Containers right now is a big element with standards. Yes. Are people standardizing on Docker containers? Is it still jump ball at this point? What is the container situation? Today in the container world, we have really two very thriving and active communities. Docker, no question, has taken developers by storm. And of course, as people mature past the single container and they're deploying more complex applications, they're continuously adopting that ecosystem. Uh, of course, containers existed for some time before you know, Docker and others. Uh, and Google has another very thriving uh, community in the form of Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. What's very interesting is that a lot of the uh, folks who are using one or the other are active in both communities, which is where, of course, things like the Cloud Native Foundation comes into play. How do we actually start to solve common problems that exist? Security. It exists in Kubernetes and exists in Docker. Can we actually work together to solve it one way so that whoever you know, adopts one style of technology versus the other, they can still benefit. But they're both very active, very healthy, growing. Uh, and from an IBM perspective, we support both of them. Awesome, so let's talk about Kubernetes. Is that have traction, is it still exploratory? Obviously Google's put their weight behind it and yes. we saw the big news of Spotify moving all their infrastructure to, uh, to Google Cloud. Right. I mean, that's a big deal, that's a big trend. Is Kubernetes making it happen or is it, what's your take on it? So what, what Kubernetes did, which was very uh, unique in terms of how they came at solving the problem, is that they solved the issue of uh, orchestrating complex applications. They came at it from that sort of angle. And so the whole operations management uh, is much easier when you think about Kubernetes. What Docker did is they came, of course, at it from the developer productivity. Very easy for me to get started in a yeah. laptop and move on and so forth. Kubernetes has been really killing it in terms of that whole management. Management, which is why or more look, orchestration and the orchestration absolutely. orchestration seems to be a value proposition absolutely for that. orchestration piece so what you now start to see from let's say an IBM container perspective is how do we marry both the orchestration layer but with a docker infrastructure or a docker API so you guys are doing a lot of work and you know Meg Swanson when she was just director of marketing now has done a great job now she's got a new role Adam now running product management Adam Gunther the team is growing you had a lot of good wins in the logo slide in terms of customer references yes. expanding rapidly so you got some success Successes. Congratulations. Now you got to go out in the real world, mainstream enterprises, get the early adopters in there. So now the, the architect that's out there, they're under a lot of pressure, not to produce the five-year plan, but the one-year plan. Yes. And DevOps now is a horizontal infrastructure, so the digital transformation is the end game, but it's usually maybe app-specific, but the challenges are also on, on, on the infrastructure, from software defined all the way up That's to the right. edge. Yeah, so what's the playbook? How do you guys, what does a customer do? Because right now, no one's really like laying out the blueprints. Where are the reference architectures? What's the playbook? Are you guys doing anything there? Is so there a group I'm, within uh, IBM that does this? Oh, absolutely. Oh, your group. I am my, my group. <laughs> thank, thank you for, the, uh, for, for allowing me to talk about that. You're absolutely right. I want to actually say something interesting because when I talk to the customers, uh, you know, things come in cycles. And we had this whole movement where developers took over. You know, it was all about the developer and the IT yeah. guys went sideways. And nobody really talked enough about the enterprise architect. You know, that prominent yeah. role that also diminished. What I'm starting to see is that those guys Rebirth, and gals, re, re, rebirth. rebirth absolutely. Yes, they're back, it's in vogue. Especially in a hybrid context, because everybody has their existing you know, infrastructure, assets, et cetera, and they're starting to marry all of these complicated you know, um, technologies and capabilities together. Uh, earlier this week, as part of you know, Interconnect, we announced the launch of what's called the Architecture Center. So the Architecture Center is a single uh, portal you can go to and start to understand from an enterprise architecture point of view, how do you actually put solutions together? If you're thinking about an IoT solution, a connected car, what are all the capabilities, best practices, and sort of starter, uh, you like assets that you would want to use? We also start to expand it into industries. So if you're in the retail industry and you're trying to do some sentiment analysis all the way to inventory and then uh, if you like fulfillment, what are the best practices in which you would connect these systems? Uh, and what we're seeing is many of our clients saying, thank yeah. you. 
I don't want to start yeah. with the atom. Well, we're doing, so we're, so we see a problem here, an opportunity for you guys, because your customers, I mean, everyone's up about the, you know, all the analysts cover the vendors and, yes. and say, oh, this is the silos, and they charge for it. We, you know, we have free, free research <laughs> at Wikibon. Brian Gracie's our analyst, and one of the things he's doing that we're putting a lot of uh, effort into that's free is actually talking about the digital builder. That's uh, Kevin Egan's term, but we used to call it practitioner, doer, the guy, the architect whose job is to get it done. Now, now technical people don't go into you know, Stack Overflow and say, uh, can someone answer me? Because they're too proud, they don't want to yes, look stupid. Yes. But they'll search like crazy. Yes. So the, we're putting out content, and the, the void, the problem is out there is that there's no data on how do I horizontally scale an infrastructure. Do you guys have any patterns that you've seen, successes, data you could share with the audience around you know, where to start for the architect, what, where's the low hanging fruit? Okay, I get Bluemix, it's cloud, I understand the services, I understand the APIification, I get the vision, I understand the digital transformation objective. What the hell do I do? What do I start? So, what do you guys suggest? What do you see? What's the pattern? Oh, absolutely. So first and foremost, one of the things that people talk about is the domain level. But when you break it down below, the first step for success that we've observed is understanding how do you take your existing assets and start to enable them into the cloud domain, integrate them. Mm -hmm. So everything you've heard this week around APIs, APIs integration is actually a very low hanging fruit. In fact, I'm shocked and surprised that this has not been something that has been accelerated further. Now, part of why it hasn't been accelerated is that people just think about APIs as a connection point as opposed to ways in which you can manage, throttle, understand secure, and so on. And all of these elements that now we've matured in terms of technology. The second low hanging fruit in terms of performance and scale is techniques that people have established in terms of how they buffer their systems of record. You know, in the, in the old days we used to Explain capacity that buffering planning. systems of record. Yes, in the old days people used to do capacity planning. They go, okay, we expect we're going to get thousands of users to our back end and so on and so forth. In the world where you're getting hit through social, mo mobile, mm -hmm. uh, partner channels, uh, you know, that scale is unpredictable. And the spikes and so on are frankly nothing that a traditional systems of record can handle. So buffering techniques start to enable us to actually create caching in the case of data. So you think, use things like CouchDB, et cetera, in front of your own data that you don't need to move, but you just sort of uh, essentially transition parts of it. Uh, you can actually start to create routing applications. One of the clients that we've worked with, uh, and I was really impressed with this, they were determining for all of their free tiers of customers, they would, for example, route them to a certain class of service for their paying. They never want to miss an SLA. So they would, of course, prioritize that against the actual you know, committed transaction. So this buffering technique is where you start to to create a cloud, an edge to the cloud. You're essentially trying, trying to create logic that mm. understands what are your business priorities, what are your SLAs, what are your policies, and how do you interact with that system. That's essentially a very important component that I think people have a lot of, uh, you know, they miss it. And there's now technology, you got in memory, you get flash, yes. you get software to do all that, and you can auto scale it, all kinds of good stuff. That's right. Okay, so Blue Mix, let's, let's step back and look at what you guys are doing. What is your group's charter? Um, from what I'm hearing in the hallways here is it's a group of dedicated folks going out there with top customers, going down and looking at, and getting down and dirty, rolling up yes. your sleeves. Yes. Describe some of the things you're working on. So, and, you, uh, and what, you're, what you're trying to do long term. So first, I would love to refer to us as ninjas, you know? <laughs> We're the people of black belts who are really starting to understand and fine tune. When somebody says, how do I get started? There's a lot of it out there. But when somebody says, I did get started, how do I actually scale this? And how do I make it fit in my environment? That's when we come in. We land, we work with the client, we understand the type of application they're building, we bring a lot of those patterns, mm -hmm. we make it work in the context of their own application, infrastructure, et cetera. And once we get it all the way up and running, we actually continue to handhold the team in terms of skills transfers and the like. The important part is the feedback loop. We then capture that back, we generalize it, and we make it available to the rest of the industry. And that's a piece that I think has lagged in terms of the whole cloud uh, world. Awesome. A lot of it is unique to a single customer as opposed to something you can use. Mo, I love talking with you. I wish I could spend more time with you. We should do a whole day with your team. Just on the architecture. Uh, we'll come down to uh, you and Raleigh. We'll come down to Rally and do an innovation day um, and get deep dive on this. Really super, super interested in the progress you're making. You guys are running, running fast now. You're going out as ninjas and, uh, and, and, and 
getting the market going really fast and taking the big customers to the next level. Final question for you though, share with the audience who's watching, who's not at the event, what's the vibe here? What's it, what's it like here? What's the show vibe, what's happening? Um, I have to say, I was talking to a colleague about this and when you walk the hallways, last year was a lot about uh, energy, excitement about learning new concepts and so on. Um, this year is a lot about, I feel like I can do it. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. I want to share what I did, which was very different from I want to learn to I actually want to share a lot of the best practices. Well, that people is out are getting there. some stuff done. You guys shipped Whisk. We shipped that Whisk. That was a huge accomplishment. Congratulations. Absolutely. I know that was kind of <laughs> coming really fast down the pipeline Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Um, um, and more stuff coming. More stuff coming. And the other thing is, we're running out of time to talk about all the great things. People are like, I asked them, what are you yeah, excited LeBlanc about? was like, couldn't finish this. Like, you can see him just like, okay, boom, 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 boom. He's like, the end. That's he right. was, was on the keynote on day one. That's right. He, he needed a whole day. That's right. But you know what? I think, John, this is the important thing. Just, we are just like our customers. Speed is the new currency. Speed of innovation, speed by which you're reacting to these requirements. That's what I believe. So I'm excited we about that. We do too. We're speed. We've speed, speed the Cube interviews. We have a new innovation called Cube Gems that are speeding up this interview. It's a highlight. Go to twitter.com and look, search on the, on the Twitter feed, on the search button on Twitter, Cube Gems, hashtag Cube Gems. Mo, you're going to be already up there. Highlights of it. You can get a little taste and obviously get the full interview on siliconangle.tv. Uh, we are here in Las Vegas for exclusive coverage. This is the Cube. I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back after this short break.